Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blog Spot. Today's Friday, the 19th of October 2007, and the uh, market's closed. We had a pretty good sell off here today, down 2.4% uh, with its $3.73 uh, loss in the SPY. Uh, yesterday, I thought that the market might have been searching for some support. Let's take a look at this 10-minute time frame as it seemed to be making a higher low in here. And the fact that it did get back above this 153.50 level. I thought that breaking below 153 would be a reason for concern. Uh, it did that right on the open, so that should have kept you on the defensive, along with the, as I've been mentioning, the declining five-day moving average. you got to really pay attention to that direction of that five-day moving average. Very good for the intermediate-term moves. And by intermediate-term I, I, the way I define that personally is anywhere from uh, 3 to 10 days to 15 days, somewhere in there. Um, I am a short-term trader, so that's, that's just to define what I view as intermediate term. Um, below the 153 level, I was thinking that maybe 152 would hold support. And the only other level I really was looking at, and I saw, went out of my way to say I wasn't looking or I wasn't calling for it to happen, but was the 50-day moving average, and that's exactly where the market came down to. So this sell-off, I think, caught a lot of people off guard today. That, that's why we saw such uh, such magnitude in, in such a, a short period of time. But it did come down to this prior level of resistance, uh, which hopefully will show act as some support. But the trend is still lower, so there's no reason, unless you're a very short-term trader, to go in and try and pick a bottom and look for that scalp uh, to the upside as it bounces. It's a very risky game, and I've seen a lot of people grow broke trying to take that trade. Just because it was prior resistance doesn't mean it will become support. Resistance, once broken, often acts as support, but it doesn't mean it will. Bullishly, we have a rising 50 and 200-day moving average. Bearishly, though, we broke out to all-time highs and the market failed, and from failed moves often come fast moves. We've seen a lot of speculation in these Chinese names, um, and that those Chinese stocks were pretty much failing across the board, most of the ones that I'm looking at, uh, as the speculation got a little bit ahead of itself. And as I always say, you know, defense wins the game. You've got to be cautious and always looking over your shoulder. This uptrend was broken, and I've been saying that, you know, as long as the moving average is declining, the five-day moving average, that you want to be careful. Although, overall, if you're an investor, you give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers as we are in this longer-term uptrend. So hopefully the cautious warnings uh, saved you some money. I don't know. Uh, uh, sometimes people email me and tell me they did. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, semiconductors, the SMH we're not going to look at. Let's take a look at the SOX. The semiconductor index, SOX, had rallied up to the midpoint of this range that we've been talking about. That range was basically 480 to 510. Uh, it rallied up to the middle of that range. I thought it was just kind of a dead market, but the path of least resistance uh, is measured by the direction of the 50-day moving average was lower. This market failed pretty miserably in here today, and it's really just looking like you know, it's, it's it's looking like maybe it's got some support down near 460, but this is looking like a big failed breakout here. Ca captured a lot of people uh, long in there, so I would stay pretty clear of these semiconductors from the long side. The IWM, Russell 2000, this is, uh, you know, things are looking pretty scary on these longer term charts once again. If you look at the weekly chart, we're going to have to start bringing out these trend, line once, trend lines once again. Um, looking at that monthly, uh, you know, here's how it would look. Um, but basically, let's go back to the daily time frame. The daily time frame, you can see how quickly things have changed for the worse here. Uh, this prior level of resistance is not acting as support. So if this market, you know, led on the way down and then back on the way up here, the Russell 2000 led the S&P kind of, although it didn't break to new highs, um, it was moving prior to it. This is a bad omen for the S&P 500. Let's see if it can find some support in here. If this was just a very emotional reaction, the support levels that we were looking for yesterday uh, were to be found at $82 a share. That failed very quickly. Um, again, I was pointing out the direction of the five-day moving average is lower, so it's t uh, meant time to be cautious, basically. And uh, I thought that the market would have to get above 8260 to consider it bullish once again. And you can see that didn't happen. So you should have been cash to uh, downside as is, is a, is a main bias here over the intermediate term. Yesterday I also said 
maybe this market's breaking down. It is showing signs of these lower highs and lower lows. So just have to be very careful. Uh, although, again, the longer term time frame, the daily does look more bullish until today. Um, but it's looking like a failed move. So uh, you just got to be very cautious in here. Like I said in, in uh, on my blog, I'm, this is why I'm glad I'm a trader because I don't have to deal with the heartbreak of buying down down in here when the market's declining, see the market rally back up, and then see it all taken back away from you in the course of just a couple of days. Volatility peaks at turning points on the longer term time frames. We're seeing a lot of volatility. That could mean bigger declines are ahead. I'm not going to make that call. I want to look at this market just a couple days at a time. Clearly, it's getting a little bit overdone on the downside, probably due for a bounce, but that's only going to be for the very aggressive traders who trade off these one-minute charts and uh, even sometimes on the tick charts. You'll see that I've got a 500 tick chart here. Uh, but below the, the daily VWAP all day in here, the, the direction of that VWAP was declining. If you're trying to catch a bottom, uh, it's it's you know the odds are against you when when the average price for the day is in uh, declining mode like we saw in there. Let's take a look at the uh, Nasdaq 100 now. The Nasdaq 100 has been where all the strength has been in this market. We've seen two big volume uh, days here that you can just quickly point to over the last couple months, and that was today, and that was also what was this Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, last Thursday I guess. Uh, I forgot which day it was, but last Thursday and then today we've seen these big volume moves so we're starting to see distribution big volume without further upside progress equals distribution if you look at the weekly chart biggest volume since uh, this fearful sell-off began right in here uh, clearly we've got an extended market if we take a look at Fibonacci on here and just take a look at this um, maybe uh, you know a third retracement brings it right down to this prior peak right here so got to continue to be very defensive in this market overall um, something I was looking at the other day was uh, on these weekly charts is uh, I'm not an Elliott wave guy, but the basic Elliott wave theory goes that there's three thrusts. Uh, the, 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 there's a five, five wave structure to the market. You have this uptrend, the retracement, then another uptrend, the retracement, and then the so-called fifth and final wave. I'm not making a call because, like I said, I'm not an Elliott wave guy, and a lot of uh, times Elliott wave is... Um, uh, just it's a good theory it's a good way to look at the market and understand the structure of the market but it could be broadcasting that there's further trouble ahead for this market that's just something to keep in the background that's not something to trade off of um, the level of support that had been holding all week in here was this uh, 5270 5265 level you can see the market came down to that level early on um, let's just take a look at it here it took it came down to that level Looked like it was going to act as support. Bounced up to where? To the declining five-day moving average. It found sellers in that area. Came down, tried to hold that level again, but at the end of the day, it was just a complete give up as people threw their stocks away. They realized that uh, uh, Google wasn't going to hold hold the market up. Google, in fact, um, you know, still ha still closed with a gain, but for the most part, anyone that bought in here today uh, was losing money as it closed right near the lows. So. Uh, it's time to be very cautious on this market overall. We are short-term uh, oversold. Just in, in, in oversold doesn't mean it can't keep going lower, um, particularly in the S&P 500 and IWM. But it'll be interesting to see if this level in here, basically 52.60 to 52.80, acts as resistance early on next week. If it does act as resistance, uh, then we're probably going to go and take these lows out. That bigger trend line that we had breached earlier in the week and then recovered from, uh, we could be heading uh, for targets based on the uh, Fibonacci, like I showed you on the uh, on this uh, daily time frame, or maybe down to that 50-day moving average. And that 50-day moving average might catch up to meet that uh, level here where that prior peak was as well. So a lot of reasons to just be cautious uh, early next week.